And one of the saints that were nearby gave them five dollars. A uh, big donation back then, amen. She took that five dollars. She sold, bought products, baked cookies, sold treats so they could bring enough things together so they could set up a tent. She said, we called it a tent, but it was really more a piece of tarpaulin with sticks in it. She said, it really wasn't like a big fancy tent like you would think. She said, man, we put it up and we had church. And the first convert to the ministry was the mother of white. Family still in this church right now. It was from there that they felt a burden to go to Christ. They felt that God wanted to save, that God wanted to deliver. They set up a tent meeting in Christ. They set up a ministry. And the Lord blessed souls were added to the church. It was in that time that she began to tell me about the nightclubs that were seated in Christ. And she said, this was back when sanctified folks really had church. You know, now we're still watching the clock because we want to go home and watch TV. Help us, God. Uh, that they went and they had church. They didn't come looking for time. They didn't come. She said that the people in the clubs would come out because it sounded like y'all were having a better time than what we were having inside. She said, we were just coming out and saying, well, why is it y'all staying longer? And she said, we would just evangelize them, let them know they needed the Holy Ghost. And people were saved right there in Christ. It was from there that I asked her about how did the church of the Martin Luther King come to be? And she told me that years uh, before any movement started, that she had a dream. In that dream, uh, that she saw uh, herself standing in the field of where this very church is, right now. She looked around in the dream. She didn't know where she was. She didn't know uh, what was going on, but in the dream she said there was a sign and it said Alabama Power. And so she looked and she said, does it mean to use Alabama Power? Does it mean Alabama Power owned? What, what's going on? And it turned out that Alabama Power owned this property. Well, Alabama Power doesn't sell every day. But she said she felt confident that if God showed her that and she told Papa and they prayed and God worked it out where they found out where the property was and Alabama Power owned the property. And guess what Alabama Power did something for them they don't do. They sold them this property to build this church. It is through the labor of their work. It is through the labor of this church. No organization built this church. No group of people, but it was the work of God. It is through this that she tells me about the tent meetings, and I've just given her a survey. Uh, she said that if they would have tent meetings in Mississippi, even the Church of God Pentecostal that was formed there, she said that the minister would try to, he was having her Bible, and it just went bad. She said, sometimes you can be a good preacher and have a bad meeting. She said that it's nobody got the Holy Ghost because to them, that's how they judge the good meeting. How many people got the Holy Ghost? You know, now we look at how many people shout. You know? yeah. They want to know how many people got filled. Nobody had got filled with the Holy Ghost. The minister was so discouraged, he was about to pull it up. And so my grandmother and some of the other saints, they decided to go to that particular area. And they began to work in that meeting. And all of a sudden, revival broke out from the body. And they didn't just say this is a revival this week. No, we kept doing revival until people stopped getting the Holy Ghost. Yeah. As long as there were people with the Holy Ghost, she said that yeah. it was so cold at times that uh, when they would drive back to Mobile, that they would put their chains together and they would uh, buy a Coke and put it on the uh, windshield of the car to break the glass off and break the ice off so they could get back home and go to work the next day. The revival went on for weeks. Said that she didn't neglect her home. She didn't say, well, I'm too busy serving God that I can't cook for my husband. <laughs> Some of us are so anointed that we're anointed not to do anything. <laughs> still went home, still cooked for us, still saw about her children, still handled her responsibilities as a mother because she taught us that you can't preach to nobody else right. if you're not serving people in your own home. Revival broke out, and these are just some of the many testimonies of ministry. One of the other ministers that I was so impacted by that she had a ministry of prayer, that she believed in praying, and not this, Lord, lay me down to sleep, but I mean teaching you how to get a hold of God. 
teaching you how to grab onto him with tenacity and not letting go. I remember as a child, she taught me how to pray. And I was sitting next to her, and, and she would say, I want to tell you what to do. When I clap my hands, you clap your hands. <laughs> you clap. Yeah, when I, when I say thank you, Jesus, you say thank you, Jesus. <laughs> okay, so I was sitting there watching, and she said, oh, Jesus. And I was going to say, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Because I want to get some ice cream and poke them in the kids. So I just didn't have any problems with you. Oh, okay, I'm going to do it. Do it right now, God. It was good. Clap our hands. She said, when I say thank you, Jesus, you say thank you. And I was just calling. But after a while, she kind of forget I was there. And she began to say things I couldn't necessarily repeat because I didn't, they, I don't think they taught that language in school that she would go into. And I said, I think she forgot I'm here. She would go into a place, God, I'm thanking you for the Holy Ghost. She would go into that zone and pray. And I want to let our family know because I had a good chance to really see her. She prayed for every one of us, name by name. Day by day. Prayer wasn't something that she just did uh, temporarily. Prayer was something she lived by. I remember there was an instance of something that did not seem like it would get resolved. But she had such a faith and the ability of God to meet a situation. I said, well, maybe I need to soften because I don't want her to be disappointed if it doesn't happen. And she told me, I have influence with God. God listens to me. Maybe you worry, but I'm not worried. God can do anything. I would go check on her in the morning. She got up about five every day. Sometimes she couldn't uh, get up and pray on her knees like she used to. But she sat up in the bed, and I could see her tilted over. And when she put this hand down, that means she was about to go to work talking to God. She would talk and pray for every need, and she actually had a little box that she used because there were so many people that would ask her to pray. And she said, my memory at this point can't hold all of the requests, so she would write it down. You may think she forgot, but she would write that prayer down. She would write down and she would put it in a little box. And she was telling me about saying, the Lord gave that to me, you know, because they weren't quick to just to say, the Lord said, but they'll say, it came to me. <laughs> I felt this would be that she would get that box and she would get up and she would only say, Lord Jesus, Every person in this box, she would go there an hour, 30, we would just talk, and sometimes I'd sneak up on her, she had that little box, and she would be praying because she believed that God was able to do exceedingly. I was so joyful this morning, and I'm wrapping it up, I know I've got 30 minutes. Uh, <laughs> my cousin Danielle sent me a video of, of her uh, when, uh, asking her, what would be something that you would want to say, and it's so good that we have these things to grasp onto. She quoted a scripture, remember now thy creator in the days of my youth. She said, I'm so glad I didn't wait till I got off the riders to decide I want to serve God. I'm so glad that I didn't wait till I started to why my body was working good. Why oh, I could still run around the room. Why oh, I could still holler and scream. I decided to give God the very best. What I've come to realize is that she was convinced of the truth of the gospel. We're living in a world today that if there's ever been a world that needs the gospel of Jesus Christ, this is a world that needs the gospel. The gospel isn't based on positive confession. The gospel isn't based on easy believism, but it is the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. I'm so glad that she told us the gospel. She believed that the gospel is the only thing that can save our world today. I remember why this past election was going on. There was so much, so many issues with race relations. And this group don't like this group. And that group hate that group. She said, what you got to realize is that all men have sinned. That come short of the glory of God. We don't have a race problem. We have a sin problem. And the soul that sins shall die. I'm going to have a thank God for Jesus. That she knew there was a way out of our she knew that was a way out of our depravity. Yes. And I'm so glad that she told me that if there's anything I want you to say at my funeral, yes. if there's anything that I want you to do at my funeral, yes. I want you to let everybody know that there is a way out of sin. Yes, sir. I want you to let them know that God has given us a Savior. And God has come down and wrapped himself in flesh. God became a man walked as a man. God felt our pain and felt our sorrow yeah, so that we could have a priest yeah, that would know what it's like to be touched by the feeling of our hurt. Yeah, and she wanted me to let you know today yeah, that time is winding up. Destruction is in the air. 
were seen on the streets of Jerusalem because they were waiting for him to come. They were the first fruits of those who would believe on Jesus. And what I come to understand, the same thing that he's done for others. The same thing he's done for other folks. He's going to do it for her. I don't know what it's going to be, but I can tell you one day and one day very soon, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. And the dead shall hear his voice. And we are going to be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. I don't know if I'm going to be dead. I don't know if I'm going to be alive. But what I do know, that when he comes, I'm going to be just like And, and my heart was hurt to watch her sit like that because that's my friend. You want to see me get mad? You, you do something to care more. You, you, you about to have some problems. We about to get upset. You don't, 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 touch, don't touch my car. But I began to look at the promise and she could see that I was frustrated on my face. I was angry. I was mad. She said, baby, don't you worry about nothing. I'm going to be all right. She said, taking off this body is like taking off the jacket. <laughs> You know, Bishop Moore, he said you got to take off the oh, Put on the Baby, I was already got nothing, so I can't die no more. I'm going to my seat, but I want to let you know that we have precious promises. 